From celebrity faces increasingly putting in surprisingly epic shifts, to the elevating of multiple stars, belts and divisions. This list is about to tell you exactly why the time of attitude, ruthless aggression, new generation and more ain't got nothing on all things post Thunderdome baby. Gareth here from What Culture Wrestling and here are 10 reasons WWE's post Thunderdome era is the GOAT. Number 10. Legends are being used to get full time stars over, not absolutely bury them. Jumping back to the last Saudi car crash before the world shut down in 2020, WWE decided to have the man utterly bulldozed the fiend in front of the lucky Riyadh crowd and destroy pretty much any remaining credibility the demon clown had left. But at that point, a part-time legend returning to obliterate a full-time megastar in the making wasn't actually that abnormal. Post Thunderdome though, WWE appeared to have finally realised the value in having their current top stars take down the old guard consistently on the biggest stage. Ages. Or at the very least, they've stopped making them look like absolute losers when they do fall to the icons of the past. Instead, WWE's Big Bill in particular has added something to the likes of Bobby Lashley and Roman Reigns' current characters by taking a high-profile L. John Cena happily came in and did the honours for the Tribal Chief and Austin Theory, and even Stone Cold Steve Austin's winning WrestleMania return did more for Kevin Owens than it did the Texas Rattlesnake. Long may the days of legends not entirely burying the hard-working performers you watch on Raw and SmackDown every week continue, eh? Now, in your opinion, what's been the best part-timer run post-Thunderdome? Let me know in the comment section below. Number 9. Genuinely over main event babyfaces are everywhere. In a time when it's arguably never been harder to get a genuine babyface over with a rather cynical crowd, the latest beast slayer Cody Rhodes remarkably isn't the only person on WWE's roster who has been consistently backed by the masses in the time post-Thunderdome. In fact, on Raw's roster alone, Seth Rollins, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens have all been able to gradually convince audiences to passionately follow them into battle against everyone from Finn Balor to the man at the head of the table himself. Songs are being defiantly sung on the regular, and hometown crowds are threatening to hijack PLEs for their beloved heroes. Even hard-hitting veterans who appear to be past their best, like the mighty Sheamus, have been able to cement themselves as one of SmackDown's most consistently engaging faces. Sometimes it's still good to be bad, yeah, but after years of struggling to root for big dogs and queens, it's refreshing to finally see a WWE landscape overflowing with undeniably awesome heroes again. Number 8. Stars are being given a chance to organically get over again. And speaking of folks managing to convince the crowd they're worthy of their support in recent times, has there been a more impressive WWE rise over the last few years than the irrepressible LA Knights? But even just a few years ago, Vince McMahon deciding he didn't see it in a performer would have killed this sort of organic movement dead in a matter of weeks. Hell, it almost did. Just look at the likes of Rusev, Zack Ryder, Luke Harper, and Cesaro. Ah, what could have been, eh? Not even the out-of-touch chairman could keep this megastar down, though, with a Max Dupree repackage soon being dropped in favour of all things, yeah! And Knight isn't the only one who has benefited from the company now being more willing to get behind performers who unexpectedly connect with their universe. With increasingly popular names like Zelina Vega, Io Sky, and the entire Alpha Academy all very much meriting their various pushes over the last few months too. Number 7. Celebrities are raising the bar For every exciting appearance from the likes of Ronda Rousey and Mike Tyson over the years, there have also been more than a few celeb cameos that haven't exactly lived up to the hype. To put it politely, who will ever forget K-Fed's surreal besting of then WWE champion John Cena on Monday Night Raw, Gronk's various bizarre appearances on the grandest stage, and Snooki briefly getting in on the WrestleMania action and delivering a rather pitiful splash for the win. But things all seem to properly change towards the back end of the Thunderdome era, with the aforementioned Rousey's commitment to the cause in 2018-19, leading to the likes of Bad Bunny, Pat McAfee, Logan Paul, and even Johnny Bloody Knoxville brilliantly throwing their all into their various showings in a WWE ring. It's now got to a point where fans are somewhat disappointed by a Paul contest in particular, not containing a freakishly athletic moment capable of going completely viral. Celebs have always been capable of occasionally blowing the roof of an arena, but never have they consistently hung with the current generation of top stars in between the ropes like they do today. Well done all! Number 6. The future looks bright for the women's division It's been an odd few years for WWE's women's division. In the time since Ronda Rousey, Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair made history at WrestleMania 35, the division has regularly felt like a bit of an afterthought really, with only the odd horsewoman program and PLE show stealer, reminding fans just how damn spectacular these ladies can be when given the opportunity 
opportunity to really perform. But there is still hope to be found in a number of workers who have now unquestionably begun to flourish in the post-Thunderdome era. Sitting comfortably at the top of the pile is current women's world champion Rhea Ripley. With this badass feeling like one of the biggest stars in the company, after her impressive performances alongside her Judgment Day pals, and in the ring against Charlotte Flair, Natalia, and during the most recent War Games battle. Elsewhere, despite some often rather uninspired storytelling in the lead-up, Bianca Belair has also remained one of the most consistent big stage performers in the company. And the likes of Raquel Rodriguez, Liv Morgan, Zelina Vega, Zoe Stark, and EO Sky have all shown fans exciting glimpses over the last few years of a quite promising future for this sometimes frustrating division. Number 5. Records are being regularly smashed Not long after SummerSlam 2023 reached its admittedly somewhat divisive conclusion, Triple H let folks know in the PLE's press conference that this event was the highest grossing biggest party of the summer in WWE history, along with being the highest grossing PLE outside of WrestleMania in company history too. But those impressive record-breaking announcements have now become as inevitable as Roman Reigns walking out of the main event still holding his big shiny strap. Simply put, the company is as hot today as it's perhaps ever been. 2023 alone has seen WrestleMania 39 become the highest grossing event in WWE history, Money in the Bank earned the honour of being the highest grossing arena event in company history, and the latest Royal Rumble go down in history as, you guessed it, the highest grossing Rumble of all time too. The numbers just do not lie, folks. And at this precise moment in time, WWE is reaping the rewards of producing a weekly product folks clearly do not want to miss whenever it comes to their town, and boasting slash building some of the most popular names on the planet. Number 4, the Tag Team Championships finally main evented WrestleMania. If you told someone even just a few years ago that one half of the highest grossing WrestleMania of all time would be headlined by a contest over WWE's undisputed tag team championships, they probably would have chuckled right in your silly little face. This was the same main roster men's duos division that had forced the sensational FTR to seek pastures new, in the wake of oozy hot nonsense and tag team wrestling in general not being treated like anything more than forgettable filler. But jump forward to 2023, and both the Usos and Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens definitely earned their historic spot at the end of Mania 39 Night 1. With this stellar chapter of the saga then being followed by another few sensational Bloodline tag team show closers at Night of Champions and Money in the Bank. And it isn't just those connected to Roman Reigns and his family who are benefiting from tag team wrestling, finally being given the respect and time it deserves on WWE programming during this current era of Triple H largely steering the creative ship either. Teams like the Judgment Day, Alpha Academy, The Brawling Brutes, and Pretty Deadly, to name just a few, have all become some of the most popular and entertaining acts Raw and SmackDown have to offer in the time post Thunderdome 2. Now Trips just needs to put that same energy into making his women's tag team division feel like a must-see part of the mayhem. Get on it, Paul! Number 3, the Intercontinental Championship feels special again. Over the course of one of the most successful reigns of recent times, Gunter hasn't just made his Intercontinental Championship feel like one of the most prestigious belts in the game, he's also also demanded all those who stand before him to raise their own levels as they look to dethrone the Imperium leader. Sheamus, Drew McIntyre, Kevin Owens, Cody Rhodes, Ricochet and many more have all produced some of their best ever WWE performances when sharing the squared circle with the dominant mid-card champ during the post-Thunderdome era. And it's got to the point where the person who finally does topple Gunter will feel like Brock Lesnar walking out of WrestleMania 30. So here's hoping WWE don't squander all of the Austrian sensation's magnificent work when it's finally time for him to drop the title he's helped restore some much needed prestige too. Number 2, PLEs have become consistently better. A lot of people have been quick to class this year's SummerSlam as a bit of an underwhelming super show. It still boasted a terrific Brock Lesnar Cody Rhodes rubber match, a jaw-dropping cash-in after a pretty hot closing stretch of a women's championship match, and a crowd-popping LA Knight Slim Jim win. But with expectations being set so high after one of the greatest PLE runs of the last few decades, anything less than consistently outstanding now simply feels a bit, well, average. Before that rare bloodline misstep and just fine Gunter battle with Drew McIntyre at the biggest party of the summer though, WWE simply could not miss at their various premium live events. The company made a special effort to ensure the routinely white-hot crowds were spotlighted through their minimalistic sets. And long-time men eventers, rising stars and celebrity superfans all rose to the occasion in Montreal, Los Angeles, Puerto Rico and London to produce epic moments that will live on long after 2023 is in the books. And compared to some of the horrendous PLE action that often unfolded on WWE programming in the age of the Thunderdome and the years before that LED playground, huh, remember when the fiend melted, lol? Even this recent Summer 
SummerSlam blip feels like a five-star special event. And number one, long-term storylines are the new normal. On top of the building of various super popular babyfaces and the rest of the entries found on this very list, one mesmerizing saga has turned a once rather tired sports entertainment product into one of the biggest things on television. Rather than simply sprinting through the drama like usual in a rush to move on to the next thing for the tribal chief, or even just making it up as they went along, the company Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman have patiently crafted one of the longest running stories ever to grace WWE programming. And in the process, the head of the table has been able to turn himself into the biggest attraction in the industry, whilst also giving the Usos, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens the platform to produce some of the strongest performances of their careers too. As already noted, it's not all been plain sailing of course, and for every legendary Royal Rumble angle, there's been another occasion when the story possibly should have been finished. You know what I'm talking about. But there's no denying how much the likes of this long-term bloodline saga, the current Judgment Day drama, and Cody Rhodes' mission to win the belt his father never lifted have connected with fans over the last few years. And all this long-lasting wrestling theatre has helped turn this current era into arguably the most successful in WWE history. And that's our list. Know of any other reasons WWE's post-Thunderdome era is the GOAT? Well, let me know all about them in the comments section right down below, and don't forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're down there. Also, if you like this sort of thing, then please head on over to whatculture.com and find some more fantastic articles just like the one this video you're watching right now is based on. I've been Gareth from What Culture Wrestling. Cheers for watching this video today and hopefully I'll see you soon. Bye bye!